Hi everybody and welcome back to Pinky Tech. So today we're taking a look at the Vitru V5 CPU cooler. Now Vitru reached out to me and asked if I would like to take a look at their product and looking at the product specs on their website, I thought, yeah, it would be good to take a look at. Now this CPU cooler is normally $35. Uh, right now on Amazon, it's running like a 30% off coupon or something like that. So you can actually get this for under $25. Uh, it's 148 millimeters high, so it should have enough clearance for pretty much any case outside of a small form factor case. Um, and all the specs on it look pretty good. So for $35, we got a contender here. So let's go ahead and get it unboxed and see what it looks like. All right, so let's get this thing unboxed. So it is the V5 CPU cooler. This one is in black. It does come in white as well. It has a five pin ARGB header. So you do need that on your motherboard if you want to power it. And it does have five copper heat pipes. So I'm expecting good things out of this. So let's take a look here, get it unboxed. All right, so yeah, packaging here looks pretty standard. Um, here we've got, looks like all the mounting hardware. So we'll take a look at that in a second here and we do have foam kind of in between the cooler itself so let's we'll start with the cooler let's set that aside and yeah uh, the heat fins on here are actually pretty good uh, pretty well spaced out uh, it has cutouts down here um, doesn't look like it would be affecting screws or anything um, but yeah so it's got that uh, the five copper heat pipes and this is removed let's take a look here so yeah, no pre-applied thermal paste, but there is thermal paste actually in the bag here. So get to that. But yeah, five copper heat pipes. Everything on there is nice and smooth. Uh, hopefully that shows up pretty well there. But yeah, all in all, um, it's solid. It, it is, obviously it's metal because it's a cooler, but it is pretty solid. It doesn't really feel cheap or anything like that. So there's that piece of it. Um, and then we've got the fan here. So it spins really nice. Um, it is a four pin uh, PWM. So that's gonna mean that you can actually uh, control the fan speed on there. Um, and it does have both the ARGB header on it and what looks to be, yeah, an extension. So if you only had one ARGB header but you needed to daisy chain multiple devices, you would be able to do that. So that's a really nice feature to have in, in a budget fan there. Um, and remember it is ARGB, not RGB, so don't plug it into a 12 volt or try to plug it into a 12 volt. So uh, yeah, the uh, fan itself is solid, not a whole lot of play on the fan blades, um, which you is, uh, you know, that's kind of nice on, like I said, a $35 CPU cooler. So there we go. And here is the mounting hardware. I'm guessing this is all pretty standard. Yeah, these are the brackets to hold the fan on. Um, I wish these would have been black since it is a black fan, but eh, it sure won't stick out too much. Um, and oh, cool. So they do actually label Intel versus AMD uh, on, the, on the hardware. So you don't have to guess which ones if you're new to kind of installing these things. Uh, so that's nice. And taking a look here. We've got the screws. Uh, those will be for the actual brackets. Uh, this is the back plate if you are using Intel, which we will be doing in ours. Um, and it says 7, 775, 1150X, 1366. Um, it doesn't say 1200 on this bracket, but I know for a fact it does actually support socket 1200, which is good because we're gonna actually strap this to a 10400 Intel processor. And like it or not, they give you some Vitru uh, thermal paste. I'm not sure who they're rebranding. I'm sure they don't make it themselves, but um, I'm a big uh, proponent of using what they give you. So we're gonna use this. I won't use the Noctua or the uh, Corsair uh, thermal paste that I have. We're gonna use this and then we'll test it with that. Cause my opinion is, is if you're sending it to me, you want me to use it and that's gonna give me the best performance for your product. So we'll use that. Uh, and other than that, it's, uh, oh, Looks like we have instructions here, so we'll put that. There's just foam left in the box at this point. All right, and an instruction manual here. Looks pretty well put together as far as pictures and visuals, stuff like that. Um, yeah, it is separated for AMD versus Intel. Um, and yeah, not really anything sticking out there. Uh, it's limited amount of words on here, which is fine for me. Um, I've done enough of these, but I do like the fact that there are some labels on here because there are people that just haven't done this a whole lot and that helps them out. So 
um, yeah, that's it. That's everything that was in the box here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this thing together and then we'll get it installed onto our test bed and we can start doing some performance testing. All right, guys, as far as installation, everything was pretty standard with the exception of two things. So first off, you put the brackets on from the underneath side or the underside of the cooler, uh, which was easy enough and was documented inside of the documentation, the instructions that they gave us. Uh, the two issues I had, the first one was kind of a, a oversight on my part, which was the bracket that they send for the Intel socket it actually doesn't have socket 1200 on there, which we mentioned during the unboxing, uh, but it had 1155. And so it took me a second to figure out what setting to put it on to make sure that the back plate would stick on. Uh, that being said, I was able to move the, past that pretty quickly. The next issue, and really the only other thing I had a problem with, this guy. So, well, this is the AMD bracket, but the Intel bracket, but this thing had the same issue. So what happens is when you put the bracket on, because this is a universal bracket for all these different socket types, the screws actually move back and forth. And so what that ended up doing is I initially I went to put the cooler down, realized that the socket, the screws weren't lining up and that kind of caused me some issues. So I had to pick it up figure out where the screws went and then, you know, take the thermal paste off and all that good stuff, kind of clean up the mess that I had made and then start again. So when you're putting it on, like I said, it didn't really take a whole lot of time. It took me probably 10 minutes total, but I would say get everything lined up first, then go ahead and pull the cooler off, put your thermal paste on and then go ahead and put the cooler down on and then connect your PWM to your CPU fan header and connect your ARGB to your ARGB header. All right, on to performance. And so, Spoiler alert, the V5 is better than the stock cooler. I don't think anyone's necessarily shocked by that news. Um, but before we get into the actual performance numbers there, I will say the V5 cooler is actually a lot quieter than the Intel stock cooler. So if you're running the Intel stock cooler now, or even the AMD Wraith Spire or Stealth coolers, I've used both of those extensively in the past, and this is quieter than those. So if you're using any of those and you want a quieter system, this is probably the way to go. All right, so before we get into the performance numbers, let's quickly go over the test bed. All I have right here is an open air uh, test bench. And so we're running actually an MSI B460 motherboard, a 16 gig kit of Oloy 3000 megahertz RAM. Remember, uh, socket 1200 and B460 only run at 2666. So no need to put an expensive RAM kit in here. And then for the processor, we are running an Intel 10400. That's a six core, 12 thread, 65 watt TDP chip. And that pretty much rounds out everything that is of relevance. We are running an M.2 drive for uh, storage, and we're also running a 750 watt semi-modular power supply from Aries Game. All right, now on to performance. So idle temps first, the stock Intel cooler had a temperature of 32 degrees Celsius, and the V5 actually came in at 25 degrees Celsius. So right off the bat, we're getting the results we expected. You have a bigger, chunkier cooler in the V5 versus the little piece of metal they give you with the Intel stock cooler. And as you can see, temperatures are better. All right, moving on to Prime 95. So we did a 20 minute loop for both of these tests and we let the CPU cool off uh, 20 minutes in between time. So we have a basically a one hour test cycle here. But the Intel cooler kept the CPU down to 72 degrees and the V5 actually kept the cooler down to 51 degrees. Now, Prime 95 is a pretty intensive workload. It's not really a real world scenario. However, you can see the V5 actually did very good at keeping it cool under a pretty stressful test. Moving on to Ida 64 Extreme, the Intel cooler did pretty well. It actually kept it down to 68 degrees Celsius. However, the V5 once again topped out at 51 degrees Celsius throughout this test. And then moving on to Cinebench R23, during the single core test, the Intel cooler was at 67 degrees, while the V5 was at 42 degrees. Moving on to the multi-core test, the Intel cooler actually went up to 75 degrees Celsius, which was the highest we saw during our benchmark testing, while the V5 kept it down to 56 degrees on the multi-core test. Now, temperatures aren't the only factor that you really need to consider here. Keep in mind, the cooler that you keep your CPU, the faster it will run, and in Intel's case, the longer it will sustain its all-core boost. So to illustrate this, let's take a look back at the Ida64 test. So remember that the V5 was keeping the CPU much cooler, and as a result, you can see the frequencies for Intel during this test were about 3.4 gigahertz for the average during the 20 minute run. Now, if you compare that to the V5, you'll see that we're maintaining almost 3.9 all-core boost throughout that 20 minute run. Now, if you wanna see how the V5 runs on AMD, then I would recommend you check out the NetGuy. 
He's doing a similar review of the V5 on his channel. And he does also PC builds, tech tips, and reviews as well. So go check out his channel. I'll leave a link to it in the description box down below. While you're down there, if you're interested in purchasing the cooler, I will have an Amazon affiliate link there, which helps out the channel. Um, I'll also leave a link to the product on Newegg as well. If they're running it cheaper there, you're not gonna hurt my feelings. God knows I would try to save some money too, so pick one of them. And while you're down there, if you happen to see that subscriber count and, and you wanna add to it by one, go ahead and do that. Leave a like on the video if you liked it. Leave a dislike if you didn't like it. Leave a message, let me know if you have the cooler, if you're experiencing similar results. And as always guys, I appreciate you watching and I'll see you in the next video.